Awesome guys, it is Kyle and we are back for another vlog and essentially we're going to do this vlog in two parts. Part one is, well, you guessed it right now. And part two will come a little bit later depending on when you watch this and when you finish watching it, right? So, what is the topic of today? Age appropriate questions within the classroom, right? So, without wasting any further time, let's get crack-a-lacking into the next topic. Cool guys, so the very next or the very first topic I should say, we're going to be discussing what we actually teach at IQ Bar. Now if you're sitting at home going, hmm, I've worked at IQ Bar for the last six months and I have no idea what we teach. Well, don't stress because I am about to save you, so let's hope you don't get tested before you watch this video. If you do get tested, I'm not sure if you will, but anyway, let's move on swiftly with the rest of the vlog, right? So we got a phonics course we got our picker course we've got our think brand new teenage course and then we got our daily oral english courses for the adults now because this is all about age appropriate questions well i suppose we should touch on the different ages for each course right cool so phonics we're looking at three years to seven years old okay your picker we're looking at between five and eleven and then your think courses well anything from 12 up until 18 the teenage years right and then our daily oral english course which is our adult course is well essentially for adults however if the brady is 16 years and whoosh, older it is possible for them to do that course if they would like right so now we've got the courses we've got our ages let's hop into the classroom and get an idea right of what an age appropriate question actually is Well, you guessed it, I lied to all of you. Before we get into the classroom, this is one thing I just want to discuss, right? So we're going to be discussing or focusing on how to get a basic set of materials adapted to someone that is older or more experienced. Now, when you come to this point in your teaching career, there's a few questions that we should ask and answer ourselves before we actually get into that class. So essentially in the preparation stage. Now, what are those questions? Is the activity appropriate for the age group? Yes or no? If not, how will I try attempt to bridge that gap? What's the point of the activity? What will the student be learning? And last but not least, should I explain to the student why we're doing this activity? If their level is up here and the level of the activity is down here, well, there's probably a good enough reason for me to actually explain why we need to do this activity when it's that basic for them, right? Now, let's get into that classroom. Cool guys, so as you guys can see, I am right on top and the questions are at the bottom. Now, if you missed the questions, you can give it a read or just sit back and relax and I'll eventually get to the questions as I'm teaching this lesson. Cool, so this is the lowest level Picaro unit that I can possibly find on my list of Brady's, okay? And we're gonna be teaching it to someone more advanced or older, okay? So the very first question, is the activity appropriate for the age group? Well, we can safely assume that it's not, because if it was, well, this vlog would be the shortest vlog in the world, right? However, it's not. So how will I bridge that gap? We will find out in a second. I'm gonna jump straight to the third question. What is the point of this activity? Now, if we say goodbye to the questions right now, we can see that it's a case of matching the picture to the sentence. Bam, 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 bam. Bam. So let's just go back to that first one again, right? Bam. There we go. And questions back up. So what is the point of this question? Well, in my mind, the point of this question or this activity is to match up everyday objects with the actual name. Bath, bath, dog, dog. To create sentences, this is a bath, this is a dog. And now they're tying everything together. And then lastly, what we could go further because it's older and this is part of the bridge in the gap is well what do you use each item for well we use a bath to wash we use a bedroom to sleep in we can do our homework in our bedroom we can possibly eat or play games in our bedroom what do we use a bed for well we sleep in the bed in the bedroom okay so different objects different uses so i would say the point of this activity and again this is my point okay it might be different for yours but it's all good the point is 
to match up the items to the correct names, to create sentences and to explain how to use them or what we use it for, right? So what will the students be learning? Well, exactly what I just said earlier, match up sentences, how to use, okay? Then lastly, should I explain to the students why we're doing this activity? Now, I would say yes and no. If I know for a fact they'll understand it, within five to six minutes of explaining, I will go, yes, explain it to them. However, if I know for a fact they're going to struggle to understand, well, there's no point in me spending the entire lesson explaining something or explaining why we're doing the actual activity and not ever getting to the activity in that lesson. That kind of defeats the whole point of while well, learning that activity, right? So your discretion, if they will understand it, go for it. If they won't, don't stress, just move on. Now, how will I start bridging this gap? Now, the very first thing is I always do the lesson, okay? So what is this? This is a bath. What is this? And then I'll get through the entire activity. Once I know, ooh, hold on, wait a minute, this is a little bit sort of young for this Brady. Now I'll go back and I'll go to the next point, right? Or if I've watched the video, or even if I've had the Brady before, and I know for a fact he's on a lower level, but he's a lot older, I'll go straight into the next step. So obviously first match up. So do you know what this is? Is it a book? Is it a bath? Is it a bed? Can you say that in a full sentence? Always get them. And this, this is sort of essential for any level, okay? Make sure that they always speak in full sentences. This is a bath. Now, how do I bridge that gap? This is where it becomes sort of slightly advanced. Well, what do I use a bath for? Hmm. Ah, well, we could possibly use a bath to wash our dogs. That works perfectly, right? But what else could we use to bath our dogs? Hmm, even if I have to write a sentence out, bam, on the board using the tools, well, do we use a bath to wash our dogs? Do we use a bath to wash our hair? Do we use it to wash ourselves? Do we use it to wash our bikes? Can we put our toys in the bath, right? If it's a kid that likes toys or a Brady that likes toys, okay? So I'm bridging the gap by making it slightly more advanced. Now, once he's answered that question, well, now I can go a little bit further and go, well, hmm. So this, with a little arrow, is the bath. But what is this pointing to the floor? Well, what is this pointing to the wall? Well, what is this over here? What are those, what are the white things? Is that bubbles? Is it foam? Is it soap? And I'm seeing what he knows and I'm just using that one picture to sort of bridge out the gap, right? Now, well, mm, that kind of works, but what happens if it goes really, really fast? Well, the next step I can do, well, do you have a bath or shower at your house? Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer bathing or do you prefer showering? Hmm, do you shower in the morning or do you shower at night? Do you shower in the afternoon? Bam, once I've exhausted all options, well, then I'll go to the next one, bam. And it's a case of me doing the exact same thing. Well, what is this? This is a bed. Well, where do we find a bed? In the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, the lounge, where? I, I don't know. How many bedrooms do you have? What do you have or what you, 100%, I just made that question up right on the spot because I forgot what I was gonna say. What do you have in your bedroom? What do you do in your bedroom? Do you do your homework in your bedroom? Do you have a TV in your bedroom? Do you have a computer in your bedroom, right? Hmm, what's your favorite room in the house? What's your favorite thing in your bedroom, right? And then get them talking about their bedroom, right? Or their bed. What does their bed look like? Can you think of three things we can do in a bed? We can jump, we can sleep, and we can all sit, we can eat, we can play, we can do whatever your heart desires. It's your bed, right? So moving on right bam and bam so if we have a look over here right now this is a clock again same thing tie them up bridge the gap and make it as complicated as you possibly can if the previous picture or the previous slide you went too difficult or you made it too complicated reel it in in this one right you always want them to feel successful at something if it's too difficult or too advanced don't keep it at that level they're going to walk away from the classroom sort of disheartened and they're never going to come back to you as a Brady ever because you made them feel terrible, right? You have to make them feel amazing. So reel it in if you have to, right? And that being said, let's have a look back at our questions, right? So if we have a look at this vlog right now, we've done the activity is an age appropriate. We bridged the gap by making it more advanced. We spoke about the point. Always discuss the point and the student, what the student's going to be learning before the lesson. It helps you bridge the gap 
in the actual lesson and think on the spot if you've already planned out two or three scenarios and then should i explain it to the student well yes no maybe it is up to you but that being said i think that's it so i will catch you in part two in around 10 minutes coffee break cheers guys